Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the domain of rational functions with radicals. And we will do a couple of this radicals as well as rational functions as well. But uh, the main idea that we're looking into is um, finding the values that are going to be a part of the domain as well as finding the values that are not a part of the domain. So when we're dealing with rational and radical functions, the values that are not going to be a part of the domain are the values of x that for rational functions make the denominator equal to zero. And for radical functions are going to be the values that make the radicand under the expression under the radical negative. Because under the real number system, you can't take the square root of a negative number, and we can't divide by zero. So um, that's basically going to be our idea as far as determining the domain is finding the values that, um, that satisfy basically each of one of our functions. So in the first example, we have y equals the square root of 3 minus 2x. All right? And we know that. 3 minus 2x cannot be negative. It has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? So because we can't take the square root of any negative numbers. So to determine the domain for a radical like this, the easiest thing to do is just set up an equality. 3 minus 2x has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? It can't be negative. It has to be greater than or equal to 0. So now we can just go ahead and solve. Um, in this example, I'm going to solve using inverse operations because I just want to remind you of a you know, trick when we're dividing by dividing or multiplying by a negative number, we have to flip the sign. It's not something you need to memorize. It's something that we need to understand, which I'll explain a little bit more when I do a problem exactly like that. But for right now, we can just remember, oh yeah, multiply, divide, or at, you know, inequality, flip the sign. Um, so now we have x is less than or equal to 3 halves. So to write the domain um, in interval notation, basically what I'm going to do is just kind of create a number line, you know, 0, 1, 2. 3 and 3 halves is going to be roughly the decimal equivalent it is 1.5. So it's going to be like right on here. Now for this, for the domain to be satisfied, x has to be less than or equal to 3 halves. So that means it can equal 3 halves because if you plugged in 3 halves, that gives you 0. And you can take the square root of 0. There's nothing wrong with the square root of 0. That's 0. But anything that's greater than 3 halves would make that value negative. For instance, let's look at 3. If you plug 3 in for x, 2 times 3 is 6. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. You can't take the square root of negative 3 in the real number system. So it's all numbers less than 3, which is over here. So therefore, that's going to continue down to infinity. So we'd write the domain as negative 1. I'm sorry. To write the domain as negative infinity. It's a parenthesis because infinity is not a number, so it's not included. And then we're going to go all the way to 3 halves. And that is a number, and that is included because they equal to. So we're going to go ahead and use a bracket. In the next example here, I have a square root of x squared minus 4. And again, it's under a radical. We know it has to be greater than or equal to 0 for the values of x to be a part of the domain. So I'm just going to set up x squared minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0, just like the previous problem. This one's a little bit different, though, because it's a quadratic. So we know we're going to have to introduce the square root. And when we introduce the square root, we know that we have to include the positive as well as the negative solution. So it kind of comes interesting. When we take the square root here, we're going to have the positive value. x has to be greater than or equal to 2. But when we introduce the negative value, kind of like what we did over there, we've got to make sure we remember to flip the sign. Because it's kind of like multiplying by negative. So it's x is less than or equal to negative 2. And I'll show you why this works and why that's correct um, when we go ahead and look at the graph. So if we go to 0, you know, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So it's saying x has to be less than or equal to negative 2. So that's going to be all values less than negative 2. And x has to be greater than or equal to positive 2. So we're going there, going that way. Okay? So either one of those numbers, any number, negative 2 or you know, anything greater than 2 or less than 2, negative 2 works. So let's look at 3. You know, plug 3 in there. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. Square root of 5. Negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. Square root of 5. Good. But what about 0? 0 is not in this graph here. If I plug in a 0, 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. You can't take the square root of negative 4 in the real number system, so therefore it's not in the domain. So my domain here is negative infinity, again, negative infinity is not included, to negative 2, which is included, and then 2, which is included, to infinity. And then we'll just use our union symbol to connect those. Okay. Um, and the next example is just a rational function, and I wanted to provide this rational expression because um, you know, we're going to get to some other ones down here. And it's just important to remember that when we're dealing with you know, our rational functions, when is the domain restricted for rational functions? Well, it's restricted for the values of x that make the denominator equal to 0. So as long as we don't have a radical in the numerator, like these two examples, all we simply need to do here is just set the denominator 
equal to zero. Because what we want to do is we want to find the values of x that make the denominator zero. Now, you could set it equal to zero like this, or you could also say, I want to find the values of values of x that um, cannot equal 0, because those are the ones that make it equal 0. So they cannot be a part of the domain. So anyways, it doesn't really matter either way you want to look at it or how you want to say it. The operations are going to be the same. We're going to want to find the values that make this equal 0 or to not equal 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to factor out an x, and I'll have x minus 2 cannot equal 0. Then I can apply the zero product property. x cannot equal 0, and x minus 2 cannot equal 0. And the reason why, um, so therefore, x cannot equal positive 2. And the reason why x cannot equal 0 and x cannot equal 2 is because it's not because you can't have 0 because you have a rational. It's that when you plug in 0, you make the denominator equal to 0. 0 squared minus 2 times 0 is 0. You also cannot, be, cannot have the values of 2 in the domain because when you plug in 2 into this function, even the numerator and denominator, but the numerator doesn't really matter. We only care about what makes the denominator equal to 0. So when you plug 2 into there, you get 2 squared, which is 4, minus 2 times 2, which is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So if we look at the number line here, again, we'll go with like 0, you know, 1, 2, 3, you know, negative 1. It can't equal 0, so that's an open circle. And it can't equal 2, which is another open circle. Everything else works. All the way here, going to negative infinity, between 0 and 2 is good, and from 2 to infinity. The only two numbers that are not in this domain are 0 and 2. So my domain, I guess I'm going to have to, maybe I'll use a red here, is going to be from negative infinity to 0, from 0 to 2, and from 2 to infinity. Now notice I'm using parentheses here. I'm not using the brackets because here we have the greater than or equal to. That means the values were included. Here, the 0 and 2 are not included. So we're going to use parentheses. And then I'm just going to use union symbols there to connect them. All right, in the next example here, uh, now we have a radical in the numerator and the denominator. And when you have a radical in the numerator and denominator, it really doesn't matter. You're going to follow the same steps as what we did like for the first two examples. The only difference is just remembering that the denominator cannot equal 0. So typically, we always said it has to be greater than or equal 0, greater than or equal 0. Well, the denominator has to be greater than 0, but it can't equal 0 because then that, the denominator would be 0, right? And then you'd have another restriction. So here we're going to do our two cases. We're going to treat each radical. So we're going to have square root of x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. But for the denominator, I'm just going to write the square root. Oh, I'm sorry, why am I doing square root? You're just doing x minus, just doing what the radicand. The denominator, I'm just going to write 3 minus x has to be greater than 0. Because the denominator can't equal 0. Because then the denominator would be 0, and we would have another, we would have another value that um, is not a part of the uh, domain. So now, why am I doing the radicals? Okay. So now we're just going to go and solve. Add 1, add 1. x has to be greater than or equal to 1. Now over here, you could subtract 3 and divide by negative 1, right? Kind of like what we did up there. But, or we could also just add the x to the other side. Therefore, we'd have 3 is greater than x. And if we go ahead and flip that around, we get x is less than or equal to 3, or less than 3, which is the same thing as far as like the flipping the sign. So the flipping the sign is not some magic. It's what we use to just make sure that we have the correct answer. So now my values here, using my kind of number line theory, I have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So x has to be greater than or equal to, to 1. So I go to 1. I say it can be equal to, and it has to be greater than. But x has to be less than 3. So that's going to be an open circle. So it has to be less than 3, but greater than 1. So you can see my domain is restricted between the values of 1 and 3. So it's going to look something like this. one and 3, where 1 is included, but 3 is not. So it would be like that, bracket 1, comma 3. All right, and the next example here, now we're going to have two different constraints. We have the restriction of my radical, and we have the restriction of my denominator. So what we want to do is find the values that make the denominator equal to 0, as well as find the values that are going to make the radical positive. We have a number 4 out here, and really that's just kind of distractor. That doesn't really matter. The only thing we care about is what makes, as long as the radical is positive and the denominators are not 0. So anything else you know, out there is really not going to be affecting it. So I'll do you know, 2x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And x squared minus x minus 2 cannot equal 0. All right, so in this case here, we just get solve. So I'll add 3, divide by 2. So x has to be greater than or equal to 3 halves. Here, I'll factor this into x minus 2 times x plus 1 
cannot equal 0, so therefore x cannot equal 2, and x cannot equal negative 1. So when I go ahead and graph this, why did I do my 3 halves twice? Oh yeah, I guess that's cool. Um, so 3, half, three halves is again 1.5, so we go to 0 here, I get negative 1, which is negative 1 can't equal, so that's an open circle. Uh, we have 1, 2, 3, and so at um, it can't equal 2, so that's another open circle. But this is saying all values that are greater than 3 halves, greater than or equal to. So 3 halves is like right here, and then it's going to be going between there and there, and then up there, right? So what happens is, what we have is we have the values from 3 halves all the way to 2. But once we get to 2, that is, that is not included. That's an open circle, and it's included from 3 halves. Nothing left to 3 halves. It has to be greater than or equal to 3 halves to 2. But then, after 2, it continues all the way to infinity. So therefore, we'll just simply go ahead and union them. All right, last but not least, the exact same, exact same thing. We're just going to go and work it again. So we have x plus 4 is greater, greater than or equal to 0. And then x squared plus 2x minus 3 cannot equal 0. Go ahead and solve. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. Here we have x uh, plus 3 times x minus 1 cannot equal 0, so therefore x cannot equal negative 3, and x cannot equal positive 1. So the issue with this one is now it's a little bit more spread out. Uh, let's go here's 0, so no, we want 0 to be like over here. 0. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4, so that's all values that are greater than or equal to negative 4 going this way. However, x cannot equal negative 3, and x cannot equal 1. But everything else is a part of the domain. So now, it's basically just kind of like the last problem. We're going to start at negative 4, which is included. We're going to go all the way to negative 3, which is not included. Then, from, 3, from negative 3 all the way to 1, it's good, but 1 is not included. And then union from 1 to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the domain of rational and radical functions using interval notation. Thanks.